Healthcare workers in the end-of-life sector could be facing compassion fatigue, a term that describes the physical, emotional and psychological impact of helping others. And uh, this could be preventing them from delivering holistic care. Well, St Luke's Hospital covered the issue during a symposium today. Grief therapist Liz Groot Alberts was among 40 international experts who attended. And she joins us now with the CEO of St Luke's Hospital, Tan Bunyao. Welcome to both of you. Prof Tan, let me begin with you. Set the context for us. How much compassion fatigue are you actually seeing at your hospital and what's causing it? Well, I think it's a bit hard to quantitate the numbers because I don't think we'd systematically uh, go around screening for it. Um, but certainly we have been putting in many measures to ensure that uh, our staff is, is not... Um, reaching that stage. I think it's really a spectrum moving from compassion fatigue to, to burnout. And so uh, we've been caring for them and we don't see many and we hope that we can, the, in the compassionate care for our staff, that prevents them from uh, feeling and experiencing this fatigue itself. Now, Prof Tan, you've mentioned that it's a spectrum like compassion fatigue and burnout, similar symptoms, I suppose. But how does the hospital actually determine the prevalence of these conditions among your staff so that you can actually intervene early? So we have actually created communities of care so that um, there are groups of people, uh, of staff that comes together often. I think it's kind of being aware and picking up red flags among our fellow staff. Uh, to, to see that if they're really tired and they've been starting to lose the joy at work, that we, we actually spend time finding out from them some of the struggles that they have and putting in interventions to help them address um, this fatigue if it's setting in. So talking about what's going on is so important. Uh, Liz, let's bring you into the conversation on this. What are some of the strategies that can actually help staff meaningfully? Well, I think we, uh, Bonnie already talks about it. It is about uh, together being aware of it. But personally, for every healthcare professional, it is about uh, an awareness, checking in within oneself. Where is my joy? Um, how much energy do I have? And it is really being aware that compassion fatigue impacts on the physical, the emotional, the intellectual and the spiritual spiritual part of us as human beings. And that one of the things uh, that is very important to start with is awareness and diagnosing and picking it up early. And uh, also like um, in St. Luke's Hospital is happening that uh, looking out for each other and often it is our colleagues they are the, the colleagues that are more aware and early aware that our tank is getting empty than actually we might be ourselves and uh, so some of the strategies are really about um, staying alert and seeing what the energy levels are seeing how much energy and giving and caring you still want to do or where the reluctance comes in to step in to those compassionate places where the heart really needs to come in because the staff are givers and right. sometimes it is hard to know when the giving stops, needs so, to stop. Lisa, as you've sort of mentioned that, you know, colleagues being aware, I guess bosses being aware is um, rather important as well. Because staff attrition, you know, we have commonly seen as a result of not addressing all these mental health issues. But uh, what are some of the other consequences uh, pertaining to palliative care settings? Well, really, the, the, the consequences are that people are leaving the job. And the other consequences are when people still stay in the job is that they are not any, they don't have any more energy and any more drive to have those difficult conversations, to go into those difficult places, those uncomfortable places, to attend to the grieving, the, the big emotional feelings, because there's not enough energy inside themselves to attend to that and to take care of that.
Prof Tan, a, a question to you about the manpower situation as far as nursing care is concerned. I mean, we've seen so many challenges with it during the pandemic, uh, many staff leaving, and, and we recently had news that more will be hired eventually. But what is that staffing situation like in the palliative care sector and what's being done to address it if there are issues? Well, I think you're right in saying that uh, nursing staff is short uh, island-wide and not just, uh, you know, in palliative care uh, uh, settings. But obviously, um, with the, the higher demand of uh, compassion in this sector, we do see a little more increase in numbers. But in, in, in St. Luke's itself, uh, ironically, we have staff asking to be in this uh, in ward that we care for palliative patients because I think it's out of their desire to look, for the, look after these patients that they want to do this work. So we're not seeing that in our... our hospital itself, but I think in general, there might be a slight uh, higher uh, need for this stuff and, and a higher attrition in the palliative care sector. And Lisa, I'll probably just uh, wrap things up here for us. In terms of the fundamental issues that need to be resolved, what are those in order to have a sustainable pipeline of talent? It really needs that, uh, just like what is happening in St. Luke Hospital, is that the staff is supported, that the staff is being listened to and being cared for, and that they are really, um, that it's really making sure that there are times uh, that they have rest. And it's not only about rest to prevent compassion fatigue, it's about restoring energy. And so uh, to provide a good workspace. It is about a working together and not only that, but also supporting staff and checking in with staff and being aware that it's not about KPIs, that it is not, a, it is not about the quantity of care, it's about the quality of care. And that's what staff want to provide. Oh, thanks very much to the both of you for speaking with us. And we're just talking to grief therapist Lise Groot-Elberts, as well as CEO of St. Luke's Hospital, Tan Bunyao.